Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'd like to revisit the concept of bulk billing, which is another way of saying legalized bribery. Bulk billing sounds very innocent on its face. Bulk billing is the, just sounds like I have 30 customers in a day and instead of manually invoicing each one of them, I just press a button and my computer software just sends out an invoice for every repair to all of my customers. Bulk billing. But what bulk billing means in reality is legalized bribery. There was regulation put in place several years ago that says that if you're an internet service provider, you cannot enter into these types of agreements with an apartment complex where you tell them, we will give you a slightly lower price on the internet if you force it down the throats of every one of your residents. So let's say I'm paying $2,000 a month to rent an apartment. What they could do is they could say, well, it's actually $2,100 a month to rent this apartment and it becomes bundled with our internet, which you are forced to pay for whether you want it or not. Usually it would be, I pay $2,000 for the apartment and I get my choice of any one of Time Warner, Comcast, Charter, Verizon, AT&T. And the reason this is a good thing is because that means that there's some sort of choice. If an internet service provider is forced down your throat, there's going to be less choice. Why? Because there's less incentive for another ISP to wire the building. So where I used to live in New York City, I had Time Warner Internet, and it was garbage. But there was also the choice to have Verizon Fios. Verizon Fios eventually just decided to wire our building, and I had a gigabit symmetrical for something like $90 a month. And it was actually gigabit symmetrical, and I used to crap out of that, and it always worked. If I were forced by my landlord to pay for Time Warner Internet, even if I didn't want it, this lowers the incentive structure for Verizon to wire my building. Even though I technically have the choice to pay for another provider, most people, even if they hate their internet, if you're paying for it anyway and you have to pay for it, do you really want to pay $100 a month again to get something that's slightly better? Okay. If you're choosing from scratch, like I'm not paying for internet at all, I could pay 90 for this, which sucks, or 100 for this, which is good. I may choose the 100 that's good. But if I'm forced to pay the $90 a month, that sucks. And if I want the good one, I have to pay 100 on top of that 90. I may say, screw this. This means that less people are going to be willing to pay for an alternative, which means that you have now decreased the incentive to wire a building with another internet service provider, which decreases choice all around. This results in many apartment complexes having only one choice for internet, and the only choice that they have for internet is the bundled option where they've agreed to this bulk billing arrangement. Now, the reason I call it legalized bribery is very often there'll be some sort of deal for the building manager. For every single resident that you force to sign up for this internet, we'll kick back, I don't know, like two or three dollars a month to you. It's disgusting. This is a problem when it comes to consumer choice, and it's a problem when it comes to actual access to good internet, for sure. But now it's becoming a problem for a number of different reasons that I would like to share with you due to the black mirror world that we live in. We have one provider called Plume, which provides these wireless access points that go throughout these buildings, and Smart Era which is an internet service provider that specializes in bulk broadband solutions. I was reading through some of their privacy policies after being reached by an audience member, and it's quite disturbing. Information specific to a customer network created using Plume Home, a type of personal information that is automatically collected. Motion in the home which are collected as disruptions in Wi-Fi waves in the customer network, and which collectively provide a pattern of motion and motion history. How does Plume share personal information with marketing vendors that help promote Plume? For example, Meta receives and uses certain data related to the use of the services to help us deliver personalized advertising on its platform and assess the effectiveness of this advertising. Now, the way that I read this is you have the technological and legal right to track how I move throughout my home, see what I'm doing in my home, and distribute that information to advertisers so that you can make more money. Now, you may think, well, fuck that. I'm just going to turn off the Wi-Fi in that device and put my own Wi-Fi router, Lewis. Why can't I do that? Because you can't. Because in the old world that we lived in, when an internet service provider provided you with a router, you could get a login to that router and you could change the Wi-Fi information. You could change a bunch of things. You could forward ports. Whereas many of these devices are designed to be controlled from a central access point, usually by the internet service provider or whoever provisioned everything for the building which means you can't. The gentleman that emailed me that has this in this building cannot turn off the Wi-Fi access point. These devices that they had put into these people's homes for Wi-Fi, they also have the ability using Wi-Fi signals to tell where you are, what you're doing, and to detect your motion. This is from MIT Technology Review. It's from February of 2024, and the image that you see here looks like something out of a Black Mirror episode. Over a decade ago, Neil Petwari lay in a hospital bed carefully timing his breathing. Around him, 20 wireless transceivers stood sentry. As Petwari's chest rose and fell, their electromagnetic waves rippled around him. Petwari, now a professor at Washington University in St. Louis, had just demonstrated that those ripples could reveal his breathing patterns. A few years later, researchers from MIT were building a startup around the idea of using Wi-Fi signals to detect falls. 
you could see where I'm going here. This rule on bulk billing was undone by Brendan Carr's FCC earlier this year. When we talk about regulations that stifle innovation or silly regulations, there was a regulation in New York City that was entered into the license for my old business. I think it was 1418138. It was my old business license number that said that I needed to have my business license number on my business card. And if I did not, even if I had it on my receipt and on my wall, I could be fined up to $1,000. And this was not a a regulation that was put in the book. This was edited mid-year. So the only way that I would have been able to check for this before before an inspection would be if I was just consistently hitting F5 on the Department of uh, Consumer Affairs website. When people say, let's get rid of ridiculous uh, regulations, yeah, fine. I'm more on the side of getting rid of those. The ones that say that an ISP is not allowed to bribe the owner of a multi-dwelling apartment complex to install their internet into the building that also has the ability to spy on you using Wi-Fi signal waves and sell information on how you move inside your apartment to other advertisers? Come on, man. Like... Why is it... It's like... When you talk about wanting to remove burdensome regulations... Why is it always the ones that actually have a little bit of sense to them that get removed first? And it's always the complete bullshit ones that are there forever. I think we spend too much time focusing on shit like Palantir, when in reality, the things that are much more um, likely to screw us in the near term is stuff like this. Because all that stuff is very, it's uh, high level, it's connecting interagency databases and stuff like that. This is already in people's houses right now. And you signed up for it. And you probably didn't even know that this is possible. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. I'll include a link to a wiki article down below, which is where we're going to be trying to collect as much information on this type of thing as possible so that we can learn more as a community together and try and push back against it collectively. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.